After a five year long wait, NASA's Juno spacecraft is now in orbit around Jupiter. This mission marks only the second time a spacecraft has orbited the huge and mysterious planet. The NASA team was all smiles yesterday as they celebrated Juno's orbital entry last night. The spacecraft will be hard at work taking pictures of Jupiter, and NASA says the images will help them better understand the planet. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood is near the Kennedy Space Center in Merritt Island, Florida, to talk about the exciting mission. Bill, so what makes this mission so significant? Well, you know, it really is an impressive achievement when you think about it. I mean, Jupiter's got the most intense, i.e. deadly, radiation field of any planet in the solar system. Its magnetic field is enormous. The gravity, everything about it is, is an extreme, if you will. And they really had to thread a needle. They had to put this spacecraft right over the north pole of the planet, kind of trying to fly just under those deadly radiation belts. And then they had to fire their engine for 35 minutes, 35 nail-biting minutes to actually get in orbit. And it all went great. Um, it all went off just like clockwork. And that sets the stage for more than a year of very detailed, up-close investigations to look down deep into the interior of Jupiter to try to figure out how this giant planet formed in the first place and perhaps how the rest of the planets in the solar system evolved. So what are scientists hoping to discover? I mean, what can you see from orbit? Oh, it's really, it's, it's how they do it. It's kind of, it's, it's amazing. It's indirect sensing by, by studying the magnetic field in detail as it repeatedly swings by in this very close orbit, mapping the gravity field, they can indirectly discern what's going on deep in the interior. One of the big questions is, does Jupiter even have a core as we think of it? Uh, there's some thought that there must be a rocky core way down compressed in the center under a layer of liquid metallic hydrogen, which is almost unimaginable in itself. Uh, they want to find out if there's a core. They want to understand the dynamo that's producing this enormous magnetic field and really try to get a sense of what the constituents are. In other words, what materials from the original solar nebula are still there in Jupiter to try to figure out how these things were processed in the very beginning to form the planets we see today. And Bill, how is Juno different from the other spacecraft Galileo sent in to previously right. explore Jupiter? Yeah, Galileo was a great mission back in the 90s, uh, but it orbited in an equatorial plane, and it was really designed as a survey mission. In other words, it spent almost as much time looking at the atmosphere of Jupiter, for example, as it did the moons that orbit Jupiter. This mission is very tightly focused on Jupiter's interior. They want to understand, like I was saying, is there a core there? What's the structure of those clouds? For example, the great red spot that I think we're all familiar with, this giant cyclone that's been, been churning for the past at least three centuries that people have been looking at it. How does that work? I mean, how far down deep into the atmosphere does that go and what powers it? It's very, very tightly focused on the interior this time around. And I think everybody's very excited to see what it learns. So we've got a mission that's scheduled to last about 53 days. Can you explain the timeline of events? What's going to be happening? Right. Well, actually, the orbits last 53 days okay. right now. In October, they're going to shorten that orbit down to just 14 days for each revolution. And then the real science will begin. Uh, so during this whole process, they'll be collecting repeated sets of data for each pass around the planet as the planet is rotating underneath it so they can map out all of these features in great detail. Uh, so it's really going to be a case of just repeated flights around the planet, collect more and more data to fill in the blanks of the gravity field, the magnetic field, and all of that. And in the meantime, uh, they've got a camera on board called JunoCam uh, that's going to have a lot of public outreach. They're going to use this to take some really spectacular pictures, and I can't wait to see those. We've just seen a tiny glimpse of it so far, but when they get up close, this camera's going to blow our socks off, I think. So, Bill, is this sort of a suicide mission for Juno, though? Is it going to end up crashing into the planet? It will, and that's very deliberate, uh, but two things to consider here when we call it a suicide mission. I mean, all missions end at some point because they run out of fuel. In this case, it's the radiation environment around Jupiter that will eventually do it in. What they want to make sure of is that the spacecraft doesn't accidentally someday crash into the moon Europa, for example, where they believe there's a, a subsurface ocean that could be an abode for life. So to prevent any chance of some future collision that could transport earthly germs or you know, bacteria or whatever to one of these moons, they're going to deliberately crash it into the, to, to Jupiter at the end of the mission uh, just to wrap things up. But the radiation is going to kill Juno eventually, no matter what they do. Exciting stuff. Bill Harwood in Merritt Island. Thanks so much for joining us, Bill.